What's up, Leron here. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this painting. What's up, Leron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. I'm here in my new apartment uh, and I'm going to do a proper tour, but here's just a quick sneak peek at the place. Um, I will do a proper tour video, but I just felt like it's time for an actual painting vid. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted the painting I showed you uh, earlier. This is a boat scene based on a picture I took in a lot, which is the southernmost city in Israel. I recorded this process before the break I took, before the US vacation, before everything, but the narration is done now, okay? So I, I had some time to um, develop some uh, additional perspective for this particular painting process and hopefully uh, some newer insights uh, that will help me better comment and better explain what I'm doing. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump straight into the process. Just one last note, this is quite a long one, so I'm going to run through some of the drawing stages, okay, to leave enough room for the painting stages. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm starting with the drawing and as you can see, this is uh, much faster than the original speed. This is about five times faster and the reason why is because it's a very complex drawing and I think I do want to focus on the painting part in this video, okay? So you'll forgive me for running through this part. What I could do, if it interests you, let me know and I can make a video just on the drawing stage and that'll be like maybe 40 minutes or 30 minutes or something like that. Okay, so I could do that and then I can actually focus on everything I'm doing and explain the perspective and explain, it's very subtle here. Everything is very subtle here, uh, but it does require some knowledge to get it right. Uh, but in any case, I'm starting with the largest object. What I usually do is get uh, the general measurements of the entire scene and, and understand what size my main object is, which is this boat, and then I start with that. Um, and I like to start with the most interesting detail first. I don't know why that helps me uh, in some ways to, to just do a better job at that, and then later on when I'm more tired I go over the simpler things that are more in the distance and, and uh, things of that nature. I find that I'm uh, the most focused in the beginning sometimes. Uh, so we have this boat, we have the second boat that's a little to the back, and then we have the dock here uh, that'll provide an important point of interest as well because it's going to be very light as you can see compared to the water compared to the side of the boat uh, now we have this boat that's a little more in the distance um, uh, I do feel like some of my scene is a little curved you will see this later on especially the horizon line uh, I don't know exactly what I could have done to alleviate that but it's just a mistake on my part uh, it's so funny when I focus on painting um, sometimes the drawing part uh, starts lacking and I need to revisit that and always I, I feel like I always need to, to practice drawing and painting. Uh, by the way, this video is a celebration. It's been a while since I did a proper tutorial. As you know, I've been to the US. I came back now. Uh, as I mentioned in the introduction to this video, this process was shot before I uh, took my vacation, took my break, uh, and I'm narrating it now after I came back from the US with fresh perspective. Uh, I'm in my new studio, so hopefully the sound is still uh, okay. I tested it out and it seems to be okay, but I still am s literally sitting in a pile of crap <laughs> because uh, there's so much to, to organize here. Uh, but I did want to get this uh, video out for you, uh, so I decided to work on that. Now I'm just doing this masts thing, and the masts are an important part in connecting the scene. Uh, there's so much going on horizontally that you want to get something uh, vertically uh, there. You see I'm hinting at some boats in the distance, on the right and on the left. Um, the buildings are very simplified because you don't need more than that. Now we're getting into some real-time action. Uh, so I'm using three primary colors as my most works. Uh, I use a phthalo blue for the sky. Now it does have a hint of uh, yellow in it, so it does have a greenish tint. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to be using uh, Hansa yellow medium and uh, finally quinacridone rose. Okay, uh, And these are all Daniel Smith. Uh, the first wash, again, I'm just trying to get everything to, to look unified and even and nice. I'm just placing the, the paint 
Uh, I don't worry too much about highlights because this is a very light wash. Uh, this is actually gonna be gonna end up being the highlights. Okay. Uh, while I was working on it, I was actually working based on the reference photo you see uh, in the top right area. So it's the black and white version of the original reference uh, picture. I didn't even look at the colorful picture. Uh, I like to work from uh, black and white and then add my own colors. Uh, so now I'm putting in the yellow for the sunlit parts of the buildings. It's going to be now covering all of the buildings, but later on we're just going to leave the highlights for the sunny parts. Um, and you can see it kind of merges into the sky. That's fine. Uh, I will later on define or better define the line <laughs> of the, the edges of the buildings. Uh, so that's uh, something I like to do. Uh, I feel like uh, there's this uh, other painter, uh, Tim Wilmot, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with his channel and his work. Uh, he has a great watercolor channel. So uh, I feel like a lot of the things I'm doing um <coughs> kind of resemble, sorry, his work. Um, I learned a lot from him and the way he does things. I like his uh, work order. I like how he starts very light and then goes in with uh, bold contrasts and then finally gets some um, some lines going and, and bringing out the details. So uh, you may see some resemblance with his style if you're familiar with it. Uh, I'm using a Raphael brush size uh, 14 or I don't remember if it's for, I think it's about 16 maybe. Uh, and then... Um, uh, I'm, I'll later on I'll switch to silver black velvet and to my uh, Leonardo or, or uh, this is the Leonardo I think I'm, I'm keep confusing the two but in any case this is just a mop brush that has a tip uh, it's a, it's good for initial washes it doesn't really matter this is why I don't care about it uh, it doesn't really matter the specifics really as long as it's high quality enough uh, sometimes even low quality can produce nice results but it's always easier with higher quality tools now notice on the left I did something funny and I kind of let the, the red paint sit there while I'm uh, gonna mix the blue for the water and that's fine because I know that later on um, I'll be able to to pull this together with the shadows also on the right I did a similar thing I just left the water blank uh, because I used uh, wet enough of a, an initial wash I know that I could wait for a few seconds and then come back with the blue okay I hope that makes sense now in a moment you'll see me making a mistake I went to uh, to uh, too much towards uh, upward with the blue. I'm going to show you in just a moment. Uh, and it kind of bled into the dock where I wanted the highlight to be. So now I'm mixing some more blue. Uh, and you're going to see in just a moment how I go back and then it, it's too much. Because I wanted to darken the water. But now you see it's way too up there. And now it's going to start bleeding into the dock. I was like, hmm, the paint doesn't move a lot. So that's fine. I can just add it. Now it looks fine. But you'll see the more well, we wait, it's going to creep up. Uh, and eat at the highlights that I was planning on leaving earlier. That's just me miscalculating the color's wetness. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's not the end of the world and I can uh, fix that later on. And in any case, the bottom part of the dock is super dark, so it doesn't really uh, matter. So now I covered everything up at this point, And a lot of people ask me about wet and wet. In this point, I can decide if I want to rework some areas, add some darkness to some spots, lift the paint from, s from some areas, as long as they're still wet and they're still a clear sheen like for now what I'm doing is lifting using my silver black velvet brush lifting the blue that bled into the dock okay I tried lifting some of it um, so now uh, the first wash is dry uh, but just to go back to my uh, earlier point a lot of people ask me should I use wet and wet when should I use wet and wet and there is no clear-cut answer for that it really depends on what you want to achieve if you see an area that needs reworking that needs either lifting the paint or adding m darker paint, then you do wet and wet. You add some more details. If you feel like some area um, needs a variety of colors, you have a dark blue shadow and you say, hmm, I want to add some red to that and it's still wet, you go ahead and you do wet and wet. So it's based on necessity and style uh, and choice. It became really clear to me uh, lately. So if you go over, I have a quick video, I forgot the title, uh, but it's a huge process of... Uh, uh, me painting three people. It's a commission work I did. Uh, and I cut it down to like five or six minutes. There you get to, I explain exactly the, the job that Wet in Wet fulfills. So you can check it out and see there. Uh, now to go back to what I'm doing right now, uh, I'm using kind of a muted wash here. It's not, it's, it's kind of a mix of red and yellow and a bit of blue. So it's brown. The reason I do that is that this is in the background and I kind of like to keep it gray. And then later on, when I get to the middle ground or the foreground, I can add some more vibrant colors, some more fun colors. Um, 
So that's fine. I wanted to start out a bit gray and, and maybe even just hint at the details there, but not even show all of them. Uh, so just the buildings and some, you know, things like this. I did paint around some of the masts of the uh, of the boats and little yachts because I wanted to keep that as a highlight. Uh, I do leave here and there some highlights. This is something that Tim Wilmot does a lot. I learned from him uh, and I love it. I think <laughs> he leaves too much highlights in my stylistic choice. It's not wrong what he does. I prefer to leave less of them. Um, but but generally speaking, this is where I got it from and I, and I owe it to him really. I really enjoy his uh, work. Now, I want to talk a bit about... Uh, let me zoom out and not talk just about the process I'm doing right now, but what I'm planning for the next while. Uh, so as I mentioned, I'm recording this from my new studio and there's a lot of work to do here. Um, I am currently, I will be very preoccupied with that. And so I don't know exactly how many videos I'll post. And I mentioned it will take me a few weeks to go back to the normal routine. And I don't know exactly when that'll be. Now, let me explain why. Uh, and this is something you keep supporting me in and I really appreciate it. Um, I feel like I... I felt I feel like in the past I thought I found a formula for my success and that is publish as many videos as possible and show everything I'm doing. Now the thing was that I just went full gas on that. And when you go full gas you sometimes miss the the you know you miss aim. And what happened was I kept going in that direction for too long. What I needed was some time off to work on my own creativity, to work on my own skills and even just to rest. So uh, this is something I missed and, and and I was aware of it, but I still wasn't able to manage my time properly and get it to, to be of proper balance. So this is what I'm trying to do now. So for example, uh, I posted a video on Tuesday showing you my new studio. Now this one's scheduled for uh, Thursday. So it's like two vids, just like the old format, like uh, Tuesday and Thursday and I, I had Sunday back then too. Uh, but next week, I may not even post any videos, you know, because I want to post them because I want to. Okay, and I think just now while I'm talking, I'm so in it, I'm so passionate about what I explain. And the reason is that I want to post this video. It's not just because I scheduled it in or just because I have to post X videos in a month, X amount of videos in a month. It's because I want to. So I'm trying to figure out how I can just become more in touch with me actually wanting to do something. You know, of course, when you have work, not everything you're going to do is something you, you would want to do at the moment. I get it. What I'm trying to do is find the balance between things that I know I'm not uh, doing myself. Um, I'm not giving myself any discounts and, you know, oh, okay, so we just rest. You know, I was telling myself, no, it's okay, don't work. Uh, or if I really needed a break. You see what I mean? So I'm just trying to find that balance. You have been incredibly helpful with this and with enabling me to do this because you keep encouraging me and telling me that it's okay and you'll be here and, and, and so on. And it really, really helps. I can't <laughs> explain, I can't stress enough how helpful I find it because honestly, I could do now seven videos a week. I could do that, but how long will it take for me to be miserable? You see what I mean? I have to balance it out with working on my own art and with just, you know, balancing out with business work and with friends and with life and with health and with everything. So I'm trying to find that balance and I am the only person to blame if I'm out of balance because, again, you've been so helpful in encouraging me to do this. And it's it probably feels like to you maybe like I'm stating the obvious because a lot of you told me like take some time off. You need it. Um, and, I, and I knew that you are right, but I didn't know how to do it. So this is in any case, this is, I'm really thankful for enabling me, for you enabling me to do that. Uh, and now I'm starting to embrace it more and incorporate it into my actual work. So later on, I'll take a nap. I'll, I'll rest a bit. I'll spend some time with my girlfriend or with friends. And I really am uh, improving that balance for a while. So uh, it, it seems to be working so far. And it's probably the vacation that made it so obvious to me. Um, so yeah, so I don't want to do stuff just because I have to, I want to do them because I know they will um, help others bring me forward and because I want to do them. So this is the balance I'm aiming at. So now, after I covered this, let's go back to uh, what we're doing here with the painting. And let me know <laughs> just in a comment, a quick comment below, what you think of this. Uh, whenever I do a painting process, I talk a lot about off-topic things. 
And I just find that it's easier for me to talk about these things while I'm looking at myself painting. So let me know if this is works for you, if you just want me to talk about what I'm doing. Hopefully this balance does work for you, where I talk maybe, uh, let's say, 60% of the time about what I'm doing and 40% of the time about something else entirely, or even sometimes the opposite. Sometimes it's 40% the process, 60% me and my life. Let me know what you think of that. I'm curious to know. Uh, now back to the process. So what I'm doing is moving from left to right just because that that's how it was comfortable for me. You can do top to bottom as well. Um, and I'm covering all of the, the buildings that are in the distance. What I, I'm not sure, maybe if I'd have done this one again, I'd go a little lighter still. Uh, on this wash to create some more sense of depth. Maybe I'll, I'll, I would have taken it more to the extreme. I went pretty dark here, uh, but still not dark enough to, to completely hurt or obliterate the sense of depth. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just trying to vary the mixture of colors. As I mentioned, I love to take a monochromatic black and white picture and then just turn it uh, into a colorful thing without even looking at the original colors because honestly I don't need them, I know what color the water <laughs> are and I can make up colors for the boats. Sometimes I will, if I really like the original picture, I'll try to preserve what I see in it. So sometimes I will do that, but many times I just won't. Um, so this is one of these instances where I heavily relied on imagination. Uh, and just what I want, you know, a lot of people say, uh, I don't know what colors to use, um, or how do you pick colors successfully, and I'm like, there is no success, that's the thing, you just do what you want, and developing that sense of what you want is just part of the work, you see what I mean, so it's just a part of doing, um, and, and the more you do, the more you know uh, which random color mixture to use, uh, random quote unquote, because it's not random, because you know. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful. Uh, so now I did the left side of the building that's a little lighter with yellow, and then the right side is with a mixture of red, yellow, and some, um, some blue. Uh, and I'm really just slowly working my way towards it. Now you want to pay attention to the edges. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit sloppy here. I, I don't know why my coordination that day wasn't as good, unfortunately, but... Um, you want to pay attention to the upper edges of the buildings. So if there are any small details like uh, and cellar or antennas, or if there's a, this a small room at the rooftop, or just the shape of the outline, because that uh, that's one of the basic, let's say, components of a good artwork is shapes. And the shapes here matter, and you want to make sure that they work compositionally. And this is another thing that just takes doing and understanding what you like, because composition is such a tricky topic, and I keep uh, reading more about it and hearing more about it and getting feedback about it from people that are trying to learn. And there's a lot of misconceptions, there are a lot of misconceptions around composition. A lot of it is just choice. Now, what I did was accidentally uh, move into the water with the wash, so I just dabbed it out with a, with a paper towel. Um, because I'm going to switch to blue soon and then take it from there. Okay, uh, I'm just doing the final details here on the building and then I'm going to switch to blue and go over the wash for the water. Now if you look at the reference photo, and by the way, I will zoom in on the photo later on so you get to see more of the details of the boats uh, and the dock, especially this area, okay, because I know it needs more attention. It's the center of interest, so I will show you that. Um, so what I'm doing with the water, if you notice, if you take a look at the photo, is uh, it starts light, much lighter than you'd think, but also darker. Uh, for example, look at the rightmost part of the picture. The sky is much lighter than the lightest part of the water, if you see what I mean. I'm going to repeat it <laughs> the other way around. The water is darker than the sky, okay? Uh, and this is something that's important to, to get correctly, uh, because it's part of the major shapes here. Now, I do know of many artists that tend to exaggerate the contrast. As I mentioned, I would have wanted to exaggerate the contrast with the buildings in the background. For me, I'm still trying to figure it out. Sometimes I try and I succeed, sometimes I fail. I, I find that whenever I'm trying to um, make up my own contrast and change the values, I get into trouble. With colors, not so much, because colors, you just use whatever color you want. The values, I find that if I try to do something from my imagination with the values, that's where I'm having a bit of a hard time. Uh, I don't know if you experience the same thing, but that's just for me. Um, so I'm trying to figure that out, because I see so many um, artists in my favorite style, which is, you know, the Impressionism and Realism, um, I like realism, but not in the sense of I'm going to paint every single thing I see, 
more in the sense of I'm gonna convey the realistic uh, s the scene realistically using little as few details as possible basically not as few that wouldn't be accurate uh, but fewer details than there are in real life I'm gonna leave something for imagination I'm gonna leave something for suggestion I'm gonna let the viewer uh, fill in the gaps I love that feeling of looking at a painting that's really that really gets you to to fill in the gaps uh, so with the contrast, I'm still having a hard time. If you look at Alvaro Castanet's work, he tr distorts a lot of things in the values. He distorts a lot of things in the shapes. He distorts a lot of things with the colors. And still the result is, sometimes it's not, but but many times it's realistic. With Joseph's book, which same thing, only more realistic, which I like more. I like his work better. I like the colorfulness of Alvaro Castanet, but I love the realism of his book, which um, if you look at David Taylor, same thing. He gets things so realistic looking and he gets the the feeling of depth and and perspective and aerial perspective so well but he changes so much uh, and he still keeps it very colorful he's one of my favorite artists too uh, now i'm exploiting some of the wet and wet as you saw to add some ripples to the water okay so that's again when do you use wet and wet when you want to when you need to um, now if you notice i'm not sure that my water is actually light enough it seems a little too dark but we'll figure it out later on when the wash dries uh, now just to keep things a little more interesting next to the dock i added a bit of yellow i don't know why but that's again just intuitively i decided to do that maybe i thought the water reflects some of the highlights on the dock maybe i don't know but we'll we'll see how that works um now i lost some of the again yellow highlights on the dock which is a shame but uh, there wasn't too much i could have done about it i tried lifting up the the excess blue paint uh, this goes to show you that you really uh, it takes time mastering levels of wetness and figuring out when it's wet enough when it's good to use um, now another problem i may run into is that my wash isn't as wet now it's fairly dark and strong um, which could be a problem you may get streaks in your wash like I have a bit of them here uh, because the paint starts to dry really fast so that's something to pay attention to I think um, and this is something I mentioned here and there tangentially not really as a main topic but if you're a beginner what I would do is focus more on uh, doing let's say using very wet and light washes w if it means you're gonna glaze many layers that's fine uh, i would focus on this in the in the very beginning and then i'll start introducing some darker washes because darker washes are harder to control but if you're working light and you have a bead and the water bead up you know at the bottom and you can continue it you get an even wash um, a, a big mistake i see especially from people who make a move from oils to watercolor or from acrylic to watercolor or even from gouache i'd say to watercolor is not enough water not enough wetness in the paint and i get in into this i get caught by this trap occasionally like here i went a little too opaque even a little too strong which uh, probably i shouldn't have done i should have uh, gone with a lighter wash for the water as well it also helps to preserve some of the transparency um so it, it feels more like a watercolor um this is something i'm, I'm i'll am i have to correct with time i'm, I'm aware of it uh, once you're aware of it, you can correct it usually. The problem is when you don't know you're doing something. If you can pinpoint the exact mistake, again, quote-unquote, because it's just stylistic choice in many cases. But if my style is going to be realistic, I have to see what I'm doing wrong. Uh, if you can pinpoint the mistake, you can probably slowly eliminate it. You'd be surprised at how slow or how, yeah, how slowly it can go if you're so set in your ways. Um, but on the other hand, it, it doesn't have to take a lot, a long time. Now, here's something, a problem I run into because of the way I did my first, uh, wash. I went a little too dark on the buildings in the background. I told you I wanted to go lighter. So now I don't have enough range of values to play with now when I paint the boat that's closest to us. Okay. So if I'd have gone a little lighter, now I could have gone just a little darker and it will already have that punch, that impact. But now it forces me because I already pushed the the, the value uh, too much to the dark side of the scale, dark side of the moon. <laughs> so it forces me to go really dark in this wash as well. Okay, and, and so this is, again, you see how a mistake can compound a bit. 
and force you to work a little differently that's fine we're learning and and this it's funny because while working on this painting i was 100 percent in it i knew exactly what i was doing and i didn't need to stop too much and plan so i'm actually happy i did it that way because i experienced i experimented with just going with my intuition which is good now i zoomed in on the boat and on the reference photo so you can see some more of the details hopefully that helps uh, let me know if this helps you when i zoom in uh, because i do want to show you more of the details and s everyone tells me like without any like there's a full consensus going on around showing the reference pic everyone wants me to show it so i'm going to try and show it whenever i can sometimes i mess up like in the shiny objects video i believe where i painted from a photo that i wasn't allowed to show on video really because it it's copyrighted uh, usually i use photos that aren't copyrighted and then it's fine it's okay to paint based on it because I'm changing the photo and I'm just showing my painting process, but I wouldn't be quick to use it in my video. And I see some creators really f being f way too fearless about using copyrighted materials in their videos. I don't know how they do it. Like, I don't care showing paintings in the video because it's for the purpose of review and it is covered in the, it is within my right to use them. But if I'm going to use something, I don't know, I just, I, it's one of my pet peeves. I have to use something only if I'm allowed to do it. I hate uh, putting myself at risk of, let's say, a community strike or not community strike, copyright strike here on YouTube. I don't want that to happen. So <coughs> just trying to be really careful and watch the channel uh, and make sure that it's all okay. Now, there they are doing some construction works here for some reason right now. They didn't do it for like a few days. Uh, and now they started while I'm recording. Uh, I hope it doesn't come through too much, but if it does, uh, I apologize and hopefully you can still hear me well. Now you see I left this nice little highlight on the left of the boat, indicating the top part. Then we have the shadow coming from the boat and onto the dock, and it's so key to connect this shadow to the boat. This is really important because if you split it, it'll just look fragmented in many cases. You could uh, get away with it, if you know how to do it. I personally don't feel like I'm there yet, so I don't want to do it. Um, but you could definitely get away with it. Um, you just have to, I guess, have that built into your style. Um, I forgot the name of the artist. Um, he's great. He doesn't use wet and wet and all and, he at, and at all, and he just splits all of his washes. I'm going to come back to you. You know what? I'm going to check it now because I did uh, make a video on him uh, in Painting Masters. So I do want to make sure that I know it. And by the way, this is another change uh, I'm going to do uh, with these narrated videos. I'm not going to be scared to stop for a moment, check some things out, uh, you know, making sure that <laughs> I get everything right. Um, I don't I don't mind that. I don't have to talk 100% of the time about the artwork I'm doing. So in any case, let's see which one it was, which one it was, and you'll have to forgive me about that. It was John something? I, f I can't believe I forgot. Oh yeah, John Yardley. So if you check out John Yardley's work, he doesn't f seem to force himself to connect any washes. He works really fragmented. John Yardley, I did an episode of Painting Masters on him. Uh, so you may want to check out his work if you hate wet and wet. He just doesn't do it and it works out great. He's He has beautiful paintings. Uh, so yeah. Now notice how I did the front window of the yacht or the boat. I don't know what the professional term for this is. You will correct me in the comments. But notice how I did it a little darker than the highlights. Th than the highlight. This is important because it is. If you notice the the reference carefully, you can see it's just a little bit darker than the uh, highlight there. Uh, so this is something that was important. Now the I did paint the shadowy part of the boat, but we're not done. There's going to be another wash that's going to darken this whole thing because it's not close to how dark it should be. And I'm well aware of that, uh, especially near the bottom of the boat where it's close to the water. This is where you get the, the usually the darkest values. Um, I, and the, the question can be asked, could I have uh, reached the, the proper level of darkness with just this wash? And the answer is yes. I just would have had to be more careful. Uh, I would have to be more to just use thicker paint in some areas but then again you run into the problem of having an uneven wash remember uh, if you're using thicker paint sometimes it's harder to control for me personally you do see artists do it and hopefully i'll improve uh, with that as well but 
it's not always easy. The moment I start using dryer and weather washes, I start to lose the fluidity and it's just hard. Uh, and I think what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna write it down for myself, is video about different levels of wetness. So I'm writing levels of wetness um, and how to practically paint using them. Um, because I work differently when I'm using a wet wash or a dryer wash. Um, so with a wet wash, you have more time. Um, and with a dry wash, you kind of have to hurry up uh, and make sure you get everything there. So I wrote this down for myself and I, I will make a video on that. It sounds like an interesting topic. There's also another one coming up that in the, in the um, idea stage that I want to do about um, several uh, watercolor exercises that I feel like really help me, like actual practical exercises that I think will help you too. Uh, to improve with your, with your skills. They revolve around the basic skills like um, uh, wash control, <laughs> um, brush technique, getting the values right, color mixing, uh, all sorts of nice things like that. Uh, so I want to compile them into one video and talk about that. So that's another uh, upcoming idea. And again, I want to post videos that I feel like are really good, that I feel like I want to do, and which is why I'm taking things a little differently now. So now, in terms of this process, we're about halfway through. Okay, there's quite a lot of work, as you can see here. Uh, I need to finish this uh, slightly darker wash and then add the, the darkest shadows. So there's quite a lot of work here. Now, starting with this uh, boat in the middle ground, or you could say it's in the foreground as well. Um, and notice how I'm contrasting it with the main boat. And the main boat on the left has this very vibrant purple and then yellow and green and blue but this one I'm trying to balance it out a little so I'm just starting with a dim and muted um, yellow and I'm um, slowly working my way uh, adding some blue there some just very muted colors though no matter what uh, and that way I make sure that it doesn't compete too much okay because I don't want to confuse the viewer uh, some have a style that's very colorful and it has <coughs> um, a lot of colors all throughout the creation. Uh, it's less my style, so uh, my style is less uh, that way. It's more, if I do a portrait, it's all going to be uh, colorful probably. Um, but just because that's one object. And, and in that case too, I will have a balance. I will have some areas that are more gray. I'll have some areas that are more, you know... So in any case, now you see I reached where the boat touches the water and I have a fragmentation there, a, a split. And the reason is I already finished the water wash and then I added the boat. And I have no problems with that. And the reason why is that this area is going to be covered by a dark shadow in any case. So when you have a dark shadow covering an area, it doesn't matter. No one will see the fragmentation through it uh, and it's okay. Uh, so this is something I want to work on. Now there's another um, watercolor painter that I forgot his name too. He's the guy that works with no pencil lines, which is pretty uh, crazy. I will remember it later, hopefully. But um, So he doesn't work with pencil lines. And what he does is he doesn't push the contrasts at all. His work is fairly light and transparent. And again, this is something I want to learn how to better do. I have to force myself to water down my washes. It's really a struggle sometimes because I tend to really want to go for the striking contrasts. But sometimes a subtle contrast can be nice. Um, and if you start very light and then go just a tad bit darker and just a bit darker, uh, you get a different, let's say, area of the value scale. You get to the darker area, which I like. I want to try that. Um, I want to try going for the darker area. Uh, for the lighter area, sorry, and not the darker area, not push it around too much. Uh, so now I have the boats on the left, and these are, again, going to be kept quite light. Uh, I do have the highlights on top of them, which is nice because it will allow me to um, to show that they're, they are sunlit. There is some light on them. You can recognize them, and especially when I'll add the masts, you will be able to recognize them as boats. Um, but I'm not going with too many details there, partially because I can't see them in the reference photo. That's the first reason I'd say. But the second reason is I didn't draw them too accurately to begin with because of reason number one. And reason number three, again, competition. I don't want it to compete with 
the main area, so compositionally it'll be wiser to keep them in the distance. Uh, the one thing I'm adding again is the masts, just to make sure that um, you can tell that it's a boat basically. Uh, but I don't need much more than that. Now again, depending on your style, you may want to do more, you may want to do less. Uh, I felt like this one <laughs> was a bit crooked. I still have a hard time with um, vertical lines. I need to probably come around the painting and then do them. Uh, horizontal lines I can get, but uh, you'll notice how I royally messed this one up. And the next one too. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I should have used a rigor brush. Um, not really sure, <laughs> but whatever, that's fine. Uh, you'll see in the grand scheme of things it won't matter as much. So now I finished with the middle values and I'm moving on to the darker one. So you can see everything dried, uh, it now looks much lighter and now I can work on the strongest shadows. And again, because the first shadow layer was a bit dark, uh, it forced me to go a little darker with the next ones and the same is true here. Uh, I find myself almost uh, getting to the black colors, um, which is, you know, that's that's fine but I do want to start aiming for a more transparent look. Um, regarding black, black colors, a lot of people ask me uh, if, I, if I use black at all in my artwork and I, I never use it, I just mix it from my primaries. The moment I use it, I hate it. I hate the way it looks. I feel like it doesn't work in the harmony of the colors. I feel like it breaks everything off. I don't know if it's me having very keen senses or just a stylistic choice that I, of, or um, let's say natural preference of mine. I don't know which it is. I don't know if there's an actual uh, reason not to, like that, that I notice something that others don't and that it breaks the, the color scheme, uh, but that's how I feel. I just dislike it a lot. So I don't use pure black. And I always feel like it's it was made from different primaries and so it doesn't fit my painting. Uh, so what I'm doing is mixing my own. Now you may run into issues if you want to mix your own dark colors, if you're using very cheap paints, um, or if you are using very light paints that don't allow you to darken them. So some blues aren't dark enough. In my example, I'm using phthalo blue, which is great. I'm using quinacridone rose, which is great. These two can be pretty dark. Um, so, and when I choose my primary colors, I do try to aim for that. Uh, I want them to be useful and practical. Uh, I want to know that they do have a large range of values, and I always talk about it. Because if I want to produce a dark um, purple, that's rather easy with most color schemes. You know, the blue and the red tend to be dark enough. But if I want to create a dark orange, for example, that's not as straightforward as you'd think. Because yellow is pretty light. If your red isn't strong enough, you won't get a dark purple and then you can't darken using purple, which uh, can hurt your feeling and, and your freedom. Uh, another example is green. You know, the blue can be dark, but is the yellow dark enough? Is it strong enough? Sometimes it isn't. Uh, so these are all things you need to take into consideration. Um, the what I do, like worst case scenario, if I can't get a dark enough color, I just use the color I can. So if I can't get a dark orange, I'll just shade using dark purples, if I have no choice, okay? Um, if I do have a choice, I will prefer to do it uh, that way. And uh, yeah, I just like to give myself that choice. So now this wash, to me at least, is a little easier. Because now I don't really have to um, do all of the, you know, I don't have to worry too much about paint drying. I do to some extent because it's drier paint. But the areas I'm covering are so much smaller that it becomes uh, irrelevant. So now I'm going to come back with uh, a bit more of a red here. Now here's where I vary the color scheme a bit. A bit. I was using so far quinacridone rose, but now I'm using cadmium red. So quinacridone rose is uh, cooler, um, let's say red, it's more close to purple or violet, uh, and the cadmium red is more close to orange. Now the reason I do it is sometimes I just like to break the color scheme, but my rule is to only do it in one spot or in two spots, not more. Uh, because if I do it more, I find that I just mess it up and I don't like the the look. 
Um, so, so I do allow myself to do it, but only in, in one or two areas and that's it. So this color scheme, generally speaking, is again, phthalo blue, quinacridone rose, uh, Hansa yellow medium, and finally, uh, this cadmium red, just used sparingly in some places. Uh, now I have to be a little careful with the shape. So you don't have as much to worry about the paint drying when you drying when you work in smaller uh, areas, but you do need to work uh, to worry about shapes because you want to get the shapes accurate. And in this stage, it's really similar to just drawing. So when you draw, you want to get the shapes right. Now here I killed that highlight; it felt unnecessary, so I just uh, killed it. Uh, now notice I love this combination of phthalo blue, which I just added now, and I'm adding more of now and cadmium red. For some reason, these two together feel really great for me. Um, I like to put them one uh, next to another. Uh, this is something I took from Alvaro Castanet's style, which is uh, putting blues and uh, reds together. Uh, and I find that it works for me, especially in the shadowy areas. It just creates this feeling of bam, it strikes, strikes, it's, it is striking. Okay, which I like a lot. Um, I feel like I'm talking too fast, so I, I am out of breath, uh, believe it or not, so I'm trying to slow down my speaking, which is why I talk a little funny now <laughs> for the last like 10 minutes or so. Now I'm doing a bit wet and wet and I'm placing the red into the blue, which is something I like to do again. Just like I did earlier, I let them merge together. So now I just place it wet and wet. Now when you do wet and wet, we talked a bit about when to do it, when not to do it, but let's talk about the practicality of doing it. When you do wet in wet, you have to make sure that you're coming back into the wet paint with a much stronger consistency. So imagine you have a very wet pool of watercolor on the paper and you want to get wet in wet. If you'll come back with a pool that's as wet, it won't show because it's already wet on paper. Uh, but if you come back like what I'm doing right now with a very dark paint, then it'll spread through and it will actually show. Th th it has nothing to do with the spreading, but more to do with the, the strength of the mixture because it's already super wet on paper. So you know once you touch it with the brush, all of the pigment's going to spread into the water. It's going to dilute it. So you have to come back with a very dark uh, wash. And this is why initial washes can seem so tricky because when you lay them, they look so dark but because they're so wet, they're much lighter. And this is the basics of, of watercolor, really. I like to mention it because it is important. Um, and I don't know at which point you come across my video. This could be, um, you could be a long time follower or this could be the first video of me that you see. So I wanna make sure I cover everything. And then if you hear the, the, the advice repeatedly, it also gets in your uh, head properly. So I like to mention these things. Uh, in every video. I know, I know it's, it can sound a little basic to some, but I learned that what sounds basic to some is really new information for others, uh, which is why I do want to show more of that. Uh, with these uh, details that I put wet in wet, like the, I don't even know what these are, but like maybe some kind of a floating objects next to the boat. Uh, notice how I have to, I had to do wet in wet again really strong and really uh, with with a strong uh, mixture just to make sure that um, it actually shows because otherwise it will just spread through the water and you won't see anything. Um, so now I'm just making sure that the edges of the shadow are conveying what I want, okay? Uh, because as I told you earlier, sh shapes um, and edges um, are some of the important ingredients in the overall composition and you want to make sure uh, that your shapes are in order and they convey what they want. Um, about the edge of the boat, and sorry if the sound is different, I took a small break, I had to like breathe for a moment. Um, the edge of the dock, there are these small details on it that I wasn't sure I want to get, but then I decided that I'm going to stick to the source and be loyal to it because I already changed tons of things. I mean, this is the one thing I wanted to leave as is the, you know, the values and everything. Uh, so I just uh, wanted it to be consistent. So uh, I I did these small bits, and sometimes, and this is another key, I guess, component to drawing accurately. Sometimes you or to painting accurately, um, is you have to 
even try actively to not understand what you're painting uh, in many instances. And what do I mean by that? If I will try and figure out what exactly it is I'm painting at the edge of the dock, uh, I'll get very confused. What's better to do is to just try and draw it as an abstract shape and be accurate about it. The same is true for the water ripples that I'm getting right now. I don't really care that it's a ripple and that it has a three-dimensional shape. Uh, you know, unlike conventional wisdom that will tell you uh, you have to understand the object in order to draw it, um, it is true in some uh, cases, but once you have control and you can get the lines to look the way you want and the washes to look the way you want, it's sometimes better to just let go of what it is you're looking at and just filter it straight through the shape and what it looks like. So then I forget about what I'm painting. This is not a ripple to me. This is just a wavy line. And then I am able to get it to look properly and it doesn't confuse me and it looks good. Okay, so that's one thing. And it's, it's an interesting uh, paradox that I'll, I may want to explore in a future video of do you, you know, on the one hand, you want to understand what you're painting. But on the other, I find it beneficial to just ignore the what and focus on the what it looks like. Uh, disregarding completely the you know the the object itself uh, but in any case now I'm gonna add a bit of um, a bit of the shadow there to the left part of the dock uh, and it seems like I have to darken the water around it so we'll see how I handle that <laughs> remember I painted this about a month ago so I don't remember everything I did uh, maybe now if I'm minim minimizing that area or I can just fill it up completely. It looks like it's going to be okay like that. I don't even have to do too much there. Uh, now hopefully the shape of the boat now is clear to you. You can see most of the details. Uh, what is left to do, we have that ledge, uh, the edge of the of the board. How do you, What do you call the front part? Uh, whatever you have there, the, this uh, railing. So there I want to add some more details and I'm going to do that. Uh, later on with a rigger brush um, and this window that I told you that I needed to do a little darker now that I added that final wash it feels like it has to be a little darker still so y it is okay to add more uh, layers uh, what you want to do is work uh, quickly and make sure you don't lift uh, any of the previous layers both near the edges so that'll be the shadow above and to the left uh, but also the paint that's under the layer you're currently working on. Okay, you want to make sure that uh, you get all of these uh, properly and looking good. Um, so now I'm starting to work on the rail, uh, which is a really cool part. You know, this is, again, I have to I have to quote Joseph's book, which on that loosely quote, I don't remember what he said, but uh, he talked about how the the painting is like the, the, the composition, the overall shapes uh, are like the person, and the the different details are like jewels or like you know clothing. You know the person is beautiful regardless. But when you add the jewels, it just brings out some more interest. But adding these rails isn't what's gonna make uh, this uh, beautiful. If hopefully it is gonna end up being beautiful, uh, it's the overall composition and shapes that does. So the larger shapes, the major shapes. Um, <coughs> these are the ones that build it, not the final details. And a mistake I was using a lot, I was doing a lot uh, when I got started, and I still fall into this trap from time to time, uh, is to to push too fast to get to the final details. I get a comment, uh, and I, I don't remember, sorry, the name uh, of you who commented this, but I'm talking to you if you hear me now, uh, about uh, being able to relate to me and the fact that I rush things and that I have to jump into the um, final details and that my videos helped you see that uh, in your own work and and uh, learn how to deal with it and become more patient. Um, so, so it's the same thing with this. You don't want to rush into the uh, the, the jewels or the decorations before you finished painting the person. Uh, so thank you for that comment. It actually really, um, I felt like it was very accurately representing the issue. Uh, so I'm happy you wrote that down because I felt the same. I could really relate to uh, what you wrote. I did reply to the comment, so uh, hopefully that's <laughs> that's going to be good. Uh, another thing I just thought about, I think I'll do a Q&A video uh, soon. Uh, I thought about doing a live stream too. I'm going to start doing the live streams on Twitch, but I first need to do some <laughs> setup here. As I mentioned, I talked about it a lot, uh, but it still is going to take some time. Um, but what I want to do is just a general Q&A video. So if you have a question, if you made it so far into the video, 
Uh, if you have any question for me about any topic from watercolor to just life in general, feel free to uh, ask me and I'll do my best to answer and to help in any way I can. So let me know what you think. Uh, it could be something personal as well, of course. That's th the whole point of a Q&A. Ask whatever question you want. Uh, write it down in the comment below and I'll start compiling a list. Uh, it's a good thing I remembered. Uh, so I'm going to mention this in the following videos as well. Uh, I think it's time for another Q&A vid. Uh, I like the conversation aspect of it. Uh, and I'm sorry for bumping the camera a bit. Um, I will have to... I didn't edit that out, but that's fine. Uh, so in any case, um, I'm trying to... You know, because editing the videos takes so long, uh, I'm trying to minimize that um, and to really show things as they are and not worry too much about it. I barely edit really... Uh, my talking videos because it just saves a lot of time and it's time that I need to devote to the business and to growing um, everything I do the the frequency the consistency the the p new products and it's really hard to juggle all of these things I'm I don't think I'm a, a typical artist in, in that sense uh, because I do I wish I w was painting more and I keep saying that and I am uh, devoting more time for that but uh, I really do because I work on so many things around it you don't get to see and it's like the finances of the business really fascinating stuff you know <laughs> and, but you have to take care of these things if you want to uh, do the be able to continue doing what you're doing uh, but I do improve in the, t the amount of time I allocate just for pure creation and a part of it is really what I talked about at the start of the video um, your support and your encouragement and and just me realizing that uh, I need more of that time. So here come the the jewels. Here comes the coolest part, the, the coolest looking part, not necessarily uh, the coolest part. Um, uh, and and this is really again the the uh, cherry on top. Um, and it, and it's cool. It looks good. It helps to bring the shape uh, out. Um, and, and it just adds to the general look. It gives you something to focus on. Uh, the eye needs places to focus on and move uh, towards and move with. Uh, so that's one thing I'm I'm happy about. I'm going to add some more of these jewels to throughout the painting, but I still have a bit of a <laughs> long way to go. The way I did this was I did the two layers, uh, dark layers, uh, the, the first wash, second layer, darker shadows. And now I'm uh, bringing in the very final details, the you know, the rails and the details on the buildings, but because I was taking things in a pretty loose approach uh, in the beginning, I have more work now to do in this stage. Uh, by the way, there was quite a lot of negative painting, which I barely talked about in this video, but the, all of the rails, you know, I painted, if you look at the boat I'm working on now, that's more at the back, um, I negative painted the water around that boat's rail. If you look at the boat that's uh, in the most uh, foreground, closest to us, then I painted the boat behind it negatively around the rail. Uh, it's <laughs> a big challenge. Sometimes it's a major headache, uh, but you just have to do it. Um, unless you want to use masking fluid, which I hate and I don't get along well with. So, yeah. Uh, now, I'm taking a break from the small um, details to add a bit of uh, details to this boat here uh, because it does have a darker area for the windows and uh, things like this and I and I hope I don't fall again to the trap of doing it uh, making it too dark here almost uh, because it's a little more to the back and I do want to preserve the sense of depth uh, but I think it's it's gonna what I think is gonna be good about it is that it will contrast more with the buildings behind um, so that's a good thing because it will maybe push them to the back a bit. And notice how my darkest washes did push them a bit to the back as well. Um, so this painting, it's funny because I'm so pleased with it on some levels. And in other, on other levels, I do have some things I'd like to improve. But I do like the composition. I do like the shapes. I like the colors. Um, I like the arrangement of all the elements. Um, what I would have done differently, and I don't know how is to just be less sloppy with <laughs> the painting, uh, I guess. Because I did miss some lines and some lines are really shaky. But it does go to show you that you can create a beautiful painting with shaky lines. And I always say you can pre create a beautiful sketch with shaky lines. I really believe that. Uh, which is why whenever someone tells me they don't have the, uh, the skills, like the physical um, motor skills to, to draw accurately, 
I almost want to laugh, be- not at them, but because you know, like there's something you don't know. Uh, that if you work this particular way, you still will have shaky lines, but it won't matter. Now, of course, there is a basic coordination that needs to be developed, and that's fine, and it takes some time, but you end up getting it. Um, like the experience I had with uh, sketching with my left hand, which is a really entertaining video, by the way, I recommend you check it out. If you search for sketching with my left hand, and you have to add my name, Liron, otherwise it finds a bunch of different videos. Uh, you'll see I had a nice little adventure there um, of painting, uh, sketching, sorry, with my left hand and really um, feeling what it's like when you haven't developed the muscle um, coordination or the motor skills, um, which was interesting because I still was able, I think, to produce a decent sketch. It just came out in a different style. Um, and I did uh, reply to another comment yesterday or the other day, I don't remember when, uh, saying that I will do the same for painting too. Uh, I do want to do that. Uh, it could be interesting. I think it'll be, at the time I thought it'll be easier than sketching, but now I'm not sure. It could be as hard, harder, or easier. Who knows? We'll give it a shot. Um, so yeah, now I'm adding these final details to the boats in the, uh, on the left section. Uh, so I'm really happy with the first one. I think it it gives it, like you can see it's a boat. Um, and I like the way it turned out. With the other ones, I do want to be a little looser. Uh, just now I'm adding the shadow. Uh, I do want to be a little looser with them because, again, I don't want them to pop too much. I want to still show that they're in the distance. Uh, here I'm, I hopefully am diluting some of the paint, yeah, uh, making it just a little bit lighter so that it doesn't collide too much with what's at the front. Uh, what else is interesting here? Uh, I think, again, the, just the edges, I could have done a better job with the negative painting of the rail on the front one, but again, it's the jewel, it doesn't really matter. So what's left of the process really, and it's a long one, we've been, now you're, you've been watching 56 minutes, so we have about 10 more, uh, and this is again just for the final details, so I'm gonna add even to the buildings, into the masts, now I'm working on that main mast, trying to pull it together after the previous uh, layer, I kind of messed it up, and now you see I made a mistake, I just turned it into some details. Uh, it's too bad, but what can you do about it, really? Um, these are some of the things that uh, I should probably like fill in a whole sketchbook with just uh, vertical lines one after another with the rigor brush. I think it'll help me uh, <laughs> because yeah, it's just um, something that for some reason keeps eluding me uh, or I sh- should move to the side of the painting but uh, that creates uh, other problems. Sometimes you just miscalculate and it's not really uh, vertical. Uh, I love the way this uh, rope turned out. Just a very quick pull of the uh, pen and uh, of the brush and bam, you get this beautiful curved line. We have another one here that gets into the water. Two of them, are in fact, in front of the uh, main boat. Hopefully I'll zoom out a little from the reference photo so you can see. I, I may have made them up too. I don't really remember. Um, I also tried correcting some of the negative painting uh, on the rail. And yeah, I'm just adding more and more detail slowly. Uh, My main goal really for the next two weeks is to just work on uh, arranging the studio and uh, then uh, allowing myself a lot of time to paint and go back to just doing it. Uh, Because I did take a break, a month break, and I feel like I'm coming back with a fresh mind. But on the other hand... um, (laughs) I also kind of lost my, let's say, technical skills. Um, So it's something I'll need to work on. And that's fine, you know, these um, break periods and rests, I think, are really helpful. Um, And and I've seen a lot of you mention in the comments that you have a similar experience with this, that taking breaks from creation really does help and recharge the batteries and it's like it's a cliche and it's common knowledge but but i don't always think about it and uh, i'm happy i did this time and it was really good um i don't i don't think i even told you too much about my u.s vacation Uh, i think what i could do um i don't know if you'd be interested in it but let me know what you think um i could show you some pictures even in a video and just talk a bit about what i was doing just as a pure fun video that has nothing to do with art really Uh, so if you're interested let me know uh, and I'll try and do that Um, I don't want to show pictures of the family because I don't know if they want to be in it Um, and I don't want to show 
pictures that show exactly where I was in terms of like that my family's house and things like this but I have tons of pictures that are just me just the views just a nice story to accompany them uh, and I think that'll be really cool I also have a few cool videos that I think you'll enjoy uh, so I may do that let me know what you think and if you want me to um, <laughs> I find that I expand my work to more non-art related uh, topics out of necessity really out of uh, feeling like I needed a slight change of direction and then taking the break for the vacation. So um, just out of necessity, really, I'm updating you on more things. But then again, it's fun. So after doing it for a while, I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. So if you're interested, let me know. Uh, what I did with the buildings, I didn't talk about it too much, is I just used a bit of a dry brush to get the windows on them. The good thing about the dry brush is that it breaks when you touch the paper and the paper's surface comes through, so you get a very streaky, um, not streaky, but very a very broken look so that it doesn't pop through too much to the front. Uh, and what I'm doing now is adding, there's an additional layer under the, the buildings of palm trees. And these are beautiful palm trees in there. I think they immediately, if you visited a lot or any place that, that has this kind of desert climate, um, climate or climate, I don't know, I think climate, uh, <laughs> let me know, uh, like you corrected my cotton pronunciation from cotton to cotton, so I don't know if it's climate or, cl or cl climate, uh, never mind, I'm just now getting confused, but in any case, if you visited a place with such a climate, then uh, you know that these palm trees really are like a, like a s uh, kind of a quick tell sign that that where you uh, for where you are, and the the moment you see them next to the hotels, for me it immediately clicks as this place, um, or as a you know like a, a desert or even tropical resort, I suppose. Uh, so I did want to get these in. Now you get a very zoomed in view of them. Um, and because it's so small and it's in the distance, um, I don't want to bring too much of the details, so I'm really going easy on the you know on the details there. Uh, and there's also a slight shadow in the water and under the boats that are s in the super distance, so I'm just getting that in there uh, as well. And now you can see the imperfections <laughs> of my painting work uh, because we're zoomed in so much. Um, so yeah, so now we're really close to the end of the process. Just some final touches, maybe like two or three more minutes to go. Uh, and you can see how some of my lines in the distance are sloppy. I killed some of the highlights on the building on the left because they felt too much. And I told you I don't like too many highlights. Uh, and if I don't like the way they look, I just will cover them up at a later wash. You just have to be careful again because it's like glazing. You're going over a light... Um, uh, uh, a layer with another layer that's wetter so you don't want to reawaken it and, and kind of destroy everything so this is the one thing uh, I really uh, have to pay attention to when I do this with the palm trees not so much because it is a darker layer so less water um, and it's the first wash I uh, it's one of the first washes I did the previous one so <coughs> so it's pretty set there. I'm not too worried about it. Now, if you look at the building that's to the left of where I'm working, you have a taller one, uh, thinner and taller. But if you look to its left, there are some highlights here. For me, they don't read well. I would have killed them too. These highlights, uh, I I'm curious what you think. Does these Do these look like rooftops or like m structural details or not? I'm just curious to know what you think. Now, it may sound to you like I just kept talking, but uh, I had to take a phone call, so hopefully that won't take me too much out of focus uh, of what we were talking about. Um, but what I wanted to mention, so now we zoomed in a bit, um, which hopefully gives you, gives you a better idea of how those palm trees in the distance fit into the overall scene, okay? Uh, because when I was zoomed in, it just looks like a a weird bunch of details that aren't as clear but now when you zoom out uh, you can probably tell better what you're looking at uh, there's also the left side that has some trees in it and I don't remember if I got to work on that um, but I, I think I think I left it as it is because it felt like it was going into the distance uh, especially with the the boats there I love the way that they look on the very left and there's this one major boat and then smaller ones <laughs> that really feel like they're in the distance. So uh, this is something I'm very pleased with. 
uh, but in any case, yeah, just a few final uh, touches here and there. Uh, and this painting is really, really near done. Uh, the overall time it took, that's, uh, I just thought about it now, it's an interesting question. I think it was about four hours, maybe, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> now, with what I'm doing now, it was really, I was like, uh, just, I decided to go for it and add these uh, small, you know, the wooden planks that compose the dock. I was really scared that it'll uh, ruin something because it's in such a major point. But on the other hand, it's such a major element that it's weird not to add that detail in. You see what I mean? Uh, because it's so much at the front, so I felt like it was a must. So I added it in uh, with a bit of a drier brush. And that's a good thing to do if you're unsure. You just use a dry brush and then it's not too intrusive. And it doesn't feel like if I would have used a wet one, it would have been a mess. It might have ended up really badly. Uh, so, but wi with a dry brush, you have more control. It's almost like you're drawing with the brush. I also added that shadow um, under the dock because this area is really dark. Probably should be a little darker, uh, which is why I'm coming back. And probably could be even darker still. Same for the boat. But in any case, I think this one is uh, done for now. I'm rather pleased with the result. And here is the final one. Uh, and let me talk a bit about what I did and wrap up. Okay, so I'm done with this one. I really hope you enjoyed uh, seeing the process. Uh, it's so funny because technically speaking, this one isn't necessarily my best painting. Uh, I think these highlights are way too strong, though I can kill them with just a very minimal wash. I may do this later on, but uh, basically, technically wise, it's not necessarily my best painting because I do mess up some of the, you know, edges and some of the, like, I'm not very accurate. But this is really a good example of how the large shapes are what matters. So you have this large boat here, another large boat there. You have this big shadow connected here. Uh, big highlight here, same for this dock. Uh, and when you are able to get the large shapes to look good, you're kind of halfway there really. And then it's just a matter of filling in the, 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 the areas and blanks, but the, the uh, uh, arrangement, the composition, the organization of this one was very good. And this is why uh, it led to this result. Even though technically speaking, I wasn't necessarily at my best. I'm not the most comfortable as well. I sat down and this was a bit too far away from me. Uh, but even uh, despite all of these, uh, the result is still, I think, very good. Uh, so in any case, really hope you enjoyed this one. You see, I preserved the colors as well. Um, I just keep being, uh, remembering new things uh, that I did here. Here it's very simplified. There's barely any even shadow under the boat. All of this area kind of goes into the distance. Um, even these boats have more of the under shadow compared to these, but these have the masts. Um, and, and again, really light. This one is a dark mast. All of the rest are very light uh, colors so that uh, it doesn't, they don't uh, come off too too harshly and too strikingly. Uh, so in any case, this is it. Really hope you enjoyed this one. Let's wrap up this video. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, apologies about the audio if it's a little different in this video. Again, I'm doing this from the living room of, of the new apartment. Um, and so I'm still working on the studio. I showed you, uh, hopefully, or I will show you in the future. I don't remember uh, what it looks like right now. It's still a mess. There's still a lot of work to do, a lot of things to organize, things to throw out. Uh, so hopefully I will be up and running uh, like back to normal speed soon and even better uh, than what it was before because now I'll have the proper workspace uh, to do everything I wanted. The room is beautiful. It's very well lit, uh, but there's just a lot of things to throw out and a lot of new equipment to buy and things to set up. But hopefully uh, I will be able to start doing uh, proper videos soon with the normal setup or even a better one. Uh, and also live streaming. Uh, I talked a bit about Twitch, which is something I want to start doing. So Twitch is a, a live streaming service and it's supposed to be really good. So I want to try this out. And this means you can join me while I paint and, and comment in the chat and I'll, I can interact with you and explain to you exactly what I'm doing. And we can talk about just about everything or anything we want to uh, while I get some work done. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in a comment below. Don't forget to like uh, if you enjoyed this one. And if it's the first video you watch, uh, subscribe or check out my other vids if you want to make sure that my content fits you. Uh, and this is it. I will see you again in another one real soon. Thank you so much for your support and for sticking around as I go through all of these changes. I will talk to you again real soon.